Welcome back to the channel. Our last video ended with us parked down at Fintra Beach. We're heading for Donegal this morning and at the moment we're driving through a place called Killybegs and I don't think I've seen this many trawlers uh, certainly not in a port in the UK for many years so there's obviously an awful lot of fishing that goes on here we're looking for this Franciscan Abbey in Donegal and uh, our sat nav let us down quite badly here and took us into a very narrow lane in this uh, old abbey grounds there is a car park the other side but you can't get to it through no. here no. this is wrong yeah. yeah i shouldn't have got myself into this situation in the first place and i'm really glad i asked carol to go down ahead and just check to make sure there was a car park actually there anyway a bit of forwards and backwards i did finally manage to reverse the van back out of this tight spot and we eventually found the real car park as we entered the real car park we spotted the travel trolls naturally we wanted to say hello but as they were resting we decided to spend the night and say hello in the morning now if you have no interest in the parking ticket saga I suggest you skip forward until you see us having breakfast this car park in Donegal actually turned out to be the worst place we stayed anywhere in Ireland the car park is plagued every evening by local kids in their little cars racing up and down and deliberately blaring their horns in an attempt to disrupt the campers down at the end. The guard are turned up at one point and very quickly they all left but as soon as that patrol car left they all came back and carried on with their merry little game. Once these spotty little kids realise that we aren't actually phased by a bit of blaring of the horn they finally gave up and left. So that finally brings us to the story of Dan and Mazzy and the two parking tickets. The previous night, we had seen the traffic warden that issued the ticket to Danny approach an Irish fan, which you can see on the left of this screen. He had a conversation with them and very shortly afterwards, that Irish fan moved and drove past us in the car park. The following morning, we became aware of the traffic wardens making a beeline down towards the campers. I could see that the traffic wardens were working as a pair. One was taking photographs and then they would walk away. I can only assume that they walked away to actually print the tickets because a short while later, they promptly came back and slapped the tickets on two English fans. If you want to see what actually happened next, then the best thing you can do is go and watch the video that Danny and Maz put out about this. Clearly, Danny filming the traffic wardens wound them up and they kept threatening to call the guarder. And clearly they did, because very shortly later, a detective turned up. And I have to say, I have never seen a detective deal with a parking issue before. After things had calmed down a bit, uh, we did introduce ourselves to Dan and Mazzy and they are a very lovely couple indeed. On the way out of the car park, when we were continuing our journey, we had our own little encounter with the same traffic warden. Carol tried to put a very small package of rubbish into one of the litter bins and the traffic warden saw her and told her in no uncertain terms that she had to take that home and dispose of it at home. I've got to be honest, I cannot recommend anybody at this stage to stay in their camper van or motorhome in that car park. The boy races are out of control and your traffic wardens are far too zealous. Mmm, nice looking breakfast. So we've got bangers, bacon, egg and what's this bread? Potato bread. Potato bread. <laughs> what a morning that turned out to be. As we left Donegal that morning, we came upon this uh, refuse truck that uh, seemed to have a little fire problem underneath the front. Pretty 
pretty soon we were back on the road and the rain began to come down again. We were on the lookout for toilets and of course somewhere to get rid of that little bit of rubbish. More by chance than judgment we ended up back in Northern Ireland at a place called Balik where there are plenty of litter bins and also a toilet. It's Wednesday the 26th of August. We're on our way to Creevy Keel Tombs. But before that we had a very important stop didn't we Charlie? What was that stop? A toilet stop. <laughs> and we were lucky because only one of these toilets were open weren't they? I tried all the doors, the ladies wouldn't open, the gents wouldn't open, the disabled wouldn't open and then a little voice said I'll be two minutes and there was a man in there. <laughs> and do you know what he was less than two minutes? Yeah and luckily he saved the day. He saved the day because the disabled toilets were open. Hurrah. I bet you think we're obsessed with toilets. Well, we are. We're in the county of Sligo now, and this is Creevy Keel Tomb. The tomb would have once upon a time been covered with a cairn. It dates from prehistoric times, and it's known as a court tomb because of the large courtyard. We only had a brief stop here because uh, these workmen were tidying up the lawns and the bushes and uh, that created quite a bit of noise so we didn't hang around that long. We're moving on now to a place called Mullamore. In the distance you can see Classybourne Castle. Lord Mountbatten, the last Viceroy of India, used to spend his summers here from about 1960. We're moving up the coast a little bit further now to Mullamore Harbour. Today this is a very peaceful seaside town with a beautiful beach. In August 1979 however this is where the IRA chose to murder Mountbatten and three other people in his launch when he left the harbour. Mullamore is now a big surfing destination and it has some very high waves, although today it's nice and calm. After Mullamore we set off to take a drive around the Gleniff Horseshoe Drive. The Gleniff Horseshoe is not a horseshoe at all, but a six mile loop of single lane road surrounded by spectacular mountain views. A few miles further on we arrive at Drumcliff Cemetery and we're going to have lunch in the car park here before visiting the grave of W.B. Yeats. William Butler Yeats was an Irish poet and one of the foremost figures of 20th century literature. The doors here are adorned with a beautiful swan and I felt like closing the other one so I could get them both in. Yeats died in France and a few years later his bones were brought here to this cemetery 
but there is some concern that those bones were not actually his as he had been buried in a communal grave and it was not possible to identify his bones alone. Time is moving on and it's about time we found somewhere to stay for the night so we're off towards Glencare Waterfall. Good, we're here. This is Glencare Loch and it's primarily fed by the Glencare Waterfall which we're going to have a look at tomorrow. Our home for the night is this little car park, used by fishermen during the day but empty at night. Tonight we're having chilli con carne with fusilli pasta, red peppers. Down that end lies the waterfall, but I think that's enough for this video. So we're going to return to the van and we'll see you in the morning. <laughs>